Hey everybody, I'm doing this in the afternoon, so good afternoon, and um, I'm going to talk a little bit today around a topic that, if anybody's read anything about my history, or watch videos or whatever, um, you'll know this is prob- this topic is the was the hard- one of the hardest things for me in terms of the realm of food and body and movement and recovery and making peace <laughs> with living a, an embodied life without food, weight, or exercise honestly holding any currency for me. Meaning like it, it's totally separated for me at this point from worth and who I see I, I am and um, my values in life. It's not that I don't care about nutrition or that I don't care about movement. In fact, especially movement, I um, I like movement. It feels good. It's that the way I go about it now is 180 degrees different than what it was gosh, 10 years ago for sure, 15 years ago, even like it's a even starker contrast and certainly 20 years ago and beyond. Um, it was totally different. And so when this video is going to be for everybody around movement, but, um, I know some of you that feel like, well, that's not my deal is being really compulsive about movement. Um, it's for you in that it it's just another thing to unhook meaning even if you don't feel like exercise was ever a problem the idea that um, we can try to earn worth and currency through that um, is all in our brains because that's the culture we're in so just kind of knowing that like if there's a little seed that's floating around in you of that too this is your video to be able to like um, unearth that basically so if you have a history or you're currently feeling like if you don't move your body um, in a certain kind of way, whether it's the kind of movement or the intensity or the length or how often, and the idea of letting it all go causes any kind of worry, panic, or guilt, or shame, or anxiety, or whatever, you know you've got a thing with, with movement. And when I say a thing, meaning there is attachment. There is something that's making that feel, that emotion get brought up and there's a charge and a connection there. So what I will, I guess what I'll start with is saying that um, just like with food and just like with body size, many of us, me especially, (laughs) so um, I uh, am just preaching to the old me here, is that... um, my worth was totally tied up in going to that stinking gym every single day. Even when I was a really little kid, I used, um, I'm talking probably at least from fifth grade on, um, you know, I played sports and I love sports. So I'm going to talk about that. I played basketball and softball from f- basketball from fifth grade on till I graduated high school and then softball from like third grade on till I graduated high school. And a, I put a lot of, and because my cup was pretty empty in terms of like feeling good enough and um, fully seen her known by myself, let alone other people. Um, and um, you know, a lot of factors, you know, it's like, I know internally I'm a pretty tough cookie and, but I didn't know how to show that outwardly without it, you know, being, um, you know, seen as too much. So my way of feeling like I could exert any kind of, um, gosh, what's the word? not aggression, but even assertiveness, I filtered that through movement and sports and not exercise at that point. It wasn't there yet, but, um, I wanted to be seen as even if I couldn't be the fastest or the strongest or even the most athletically gifted or talented, I was going to be the one that outlasted. And that was how it was going to be. And I wore that like a badge of honor. Like I, you know, I never, I don't think I've ever threw up any kind of conditioning practices, but you know, I would push myself to the point of overheating. I was in fifth grade doing this stuff. Or um, I played through so many injuries. And I acted as if, um, you know, I was making a million dollars a year or $10 million a year. I played as if, like, I was going to lose out. And I didn't understand at the time why I was so driven. Um, I knew that I wanted to please the coaches. I wanted to please my dad. I wanted to show them that I was strong, that I was had willpower, that I was tough, that um, I was disciplined, and basically using my body to try to get those things from people because I didn't feel enough of that from myself. 
And that, that was my life. I mean, I love those and it was hard. And that's why exercise compulsion is a tricky thing to, twi- to undo um, for me, particularly because of those early um, patterns. And it's because movement feels good, like playing sports or having an activity you love to do, whether it's not sport related, it's hiking or um, yoga or whatever it is. Um, it's tricky to uncouple, like figure out where the line is between what feels good and, um, and what feels like I've got to do it because of these other emotional um, intrinsic need factors. So um, that was the beginnings of how if I can look back, like that's how stuff turned compulsive for me. It started very early. Um, I remember I pulled a growing muscle in basketball practice one day, and I kept running to the point where I, I couldn't, I collapsed because I couldn't stop. You know, I'm not, I wasn't even that good, but I felt like that I needed, like I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give people the satisfaction of seeing that, like I'm not trying my hardest, and that was really, you know, just this addiction to pleasing, people pleasing. Um, that I had at such a young age. So that, I want really, as you're watching the video, video, I really want you to see how deep the roots can go and why this feels so hard now and why you're trying to get worth out of how sculpted your muscles are or how far you can run or how little rest you can get by with before you jump into the next movement or exercise or whatever it is you're doing or how it is you can't even miss a week without panicking um, because it's deeply rooted and that's really important to know. Um, yeah, so as the years go by, went by, I mean, what's typical to do when you're still in your earlier journeys with, let's say, intuitive eating or recovery of any kind is that um, people do a lot of switching. I certainly did. So I went from restricting and, you know, some over exercise, but it wasn't that bad yet when I was in my late teens, um, very, very early 20s, but very, barely, till 20. Um, is that I went from wanting to be thin to being, okay, well, I'm not gonna be thin because that's not healthy and it freaks everybody out. So I'm going to be really fit and I'm gonna be strong and I'm gonna be able to run and do this and do that. And um, I got a lot of reinforcement for that, a lot. Because we do live in a culture that equates being really fit. I mean, um, our inner, you know, most people, what they spend their time doing um, at least this time of year from Thursday to Monday is watching other people play sports and these people make millions and millions of dollars a day by being able to move their bodies. I'm not saying that like that that's bad that that's our former pastime. I'm just saying that isn't it interesting that that's what we will spend a lot of money and time on watching other people do things um, at a really high level. Again, not a bad thing. It's that we put that up on a pedestal big time and I did too and so we pedestalize that as being somebody who's just they're better than us they're gifted um and physically they they are at the genetic (laughs) um outliers of what physically people's bodies can do how fast they can run and jump and and lift and and do things and I and, and hit and catch and throw and all that um and I get that. And I grew up in that world. So I, I get why there's, it's, you know, it, 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 again, there's that thin line between like what's fun and entertaining and, and joyful to um, um, over the line of obsession and petalization of it. So we can see how easily that hap- why that soaks into us as well. Um, that you can't just be um, average and play a sport. You have to like be somehow better. So if you can't be the best, you're gonna like, so you're in the gym environment, if you can't be the, the strongest or the whatever, you're gonna be the one that outlast, basically. Um, and people are gonna give you a lot of praise and compliments about that, how you do that. And little do they know in your mind, you're thinking, oh my gosh, really? Like, I get out of bed in a panic because if I don't get out of bed and go do this thing, I'm going to feel guilty all day long. So I'm doing this workout to avoid the panic and the dread and the shame and to avoid having to compensate with my eating now because I love being here at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. or 8 p.m. or whatever it is that you make yourself do when you're not all that sure that you want to do or that you, or you know that you want to do but you can't let yourself off the hook and just rest or just do half of what you're doing or do something totally different because you don't really like this in the first place. And so that's a slow type of torture. 
that I don't know if you recognize. I know the people that praising you don't recognize, otherwise they wouldn't say it because they wouldn't. They don't know the depths that you're in around that. Okay. So this is a really important. You know, this is this is an important conversation. So I want to just talk about the idea that if you're using your workouts or your level of musculature or how much you can do as a source of pride in yourself, you're missing out on a way to actually have true pride in yourself because this isn't lasting. No matter how fit you get, the most talented athletes in the world, they have to retire someday and they're not going to be as lean, they're not going to be as muscular, they're not going to be as strong. Um, Their bodies are going to change too. So you're not, your training that's um, excessive, which does break down your body, it's not healthy. When people think that like doing more is healthy, that's just um, that trap, that mirage that we've fallen into that, that more is better, that, that more muscle is better, that faster is better, whatever, or that, um, that more is better. It's not true. We all, everybody has its own, like, there's a, there's a place of limiting, um, Helpfulness or healthfulness in our bodies. Um, for me, for example, I remember you know when I was pretty compulsive and I was in the, the height of a lot of my restriction and, and binging times, and I was working out a lot. I got my blood drawn for what it was some kind of free blood draw I did somewhere, um, a, like a, um, attached to my gym. My labs were terrible, and I'm not going to talk about how much I moved and how little I ate and how much I binged because that's not the point. Uh, what I was doing specifically, it's more about it was the amount that most people would like praise, um, and yet my body wasn't healthy. And truly, the labs were not good, um, and I didn't look like there was a problem. By the way, I, had, I was like you know pretty muscular and um, I could run a lot and run far and lift a lot and do all these things, but internally my body was not doing good. Because at that level of the way I was moving, it was a stressor. And there are a lot of good studies, if you want to go Google this stuff, around um, that everybody has its like um, threshold of what's stressful to it exercise-wise. And when you hit that, you're not only going to have diminishing returns in what you can do, but in your health parameters as well. And so for me, I hit that place where it's like... Um, my inflammatory markers were up and my cholesterol was up and all these things were not good. And, you know, I wanted to blame it on some kind of food intake, but it wasn't. It was just the, the excessive exercise. And I also um, recognized it really wasn't making me leaner. My body was preserving itself under all that trauma and stress from over-exercising. And again, my numbers of how much I was moving doesn't, don't matter. It's more about you'll know because... Um, You'll know physically, you'll know emotionally, you'll know mentally, like where's the, uh, that overmark. Okay, so it's really important that you all think about like, what that feels like and what that's going to feel like in your system is one day it feels good to push yourself a little bit more and you can do that easily. I mean, you might, you know, again, all bodies have to acclimate to like higher levels of movement. So I'm not saying it always feels good, but you shouldn't feel like wasted and exhausted afterwards. You should feel like, oh, that was good, I feel good, and I can go about the rest of my day and have energy. If you're not having that, then it's too much. Or maybe you have that, but emotionally and mentally you feel spent, and you feel like just overall, okay, okay, i got to like not make, I can't undo all this. You may be doing too much because you're putting a lot of expectation on how much is this is going to change your body or how healthy this is going to make you or whatever's going on in your relationship with, with exercise and what you think it'll do for you. Because bottom line with movement, it's not a good calorie compensator because it just makes you hungrier and need more food. And second, secondarily, <laughs> um, mentally and emotionally, physically, it puts a lot of stress on your whole system to do more than you need to do in all those realms. So that's what I want you all to be thinking about as you're, you've seen this video and you're thinking about like what's your relationship with movement. Is there is such a thing as too much? And one, that's damaging. Two, unhooking your worth from how much muscle definition you have, how much you can do. Um, 
and really, again, going back to values, like, you know, how is it you want to be spending your time? How is it you want people to remember you? How much your biceps show? Or, you know, how calm and present you can be in the absence of movement. So I know what my decision has been. And if you have any questions about how to get yourself to that place too, um, you know, feel free to leave some messages down here and I'll be happy to um, go deeper that with that with, that, with you. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I am going to do another video about the flip side, which I've been through as well, which is extra, I call exercise hesitance, meaning I don't want to do anything. It all turns me off, <laughs> basically. Um, but I think that everybody... I think that in this journey, it's easy to flip back and forth between those two things of compulsion to hesitance and wanting to like stay far away as possible from movement because we've had good reasons to feel that way, not because we're lazy or we don't care. Um, in fact, sometimes that's what's the most frustrating. We do care and we feel that part of us wants to move. We just don't know how to get there um, in a non-compulsive kind of way and how to deal with the feelings that might come up when you do start to move that, does, that don't feel good. So that's a video for another day. We're going to do that. Um, if there's anything else you would all love me to talk about, please, again, tag me in the, in the um, comments below. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks so much and take care. Bye.